In parting ways with Nick Foles, the Eagles open themselves up to a very important question. Just how high are they on Nate Sudfeld? Well, the Birds did end up placing a tender on the former Indiana quarterback who has spent the last two years learning from under both Nick Foles and of course Carson Wentz in an environment built for quarterback development. Doug Peterson pined for a project arm ever since his arrival in Philadelphia and found it in Sudfeld in the early stages of last season. But should the Eagles at least look at a veteran arm before handing the reins over or is Sudfeld ready to step up to the plate? My name is Liam Jenkins and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, if you're not subscribed already and you do enjoy this kind of content, it would mean the world to us if you could just hit that big red button and maybe leave a comment and a like down below. Don't forget, for your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage, you can follow my content and all of our writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. For many Eagles fans, this question was already answered in the preseason of last year when he completed 43 of 74 passes for 524 yards with an average of 7 yards per pass. That should come as no surprise given that of course back in his time at Indiana he led the Big Ten in yards per pass play at 8.2. But I wanted to go back and look at this and see how much changed from his time at Indiana to year one with the Eagles all the way to what we saw in preseason of last year and the results were very very surprising. This is a concept the Eagles like to run often and he's going to simply try and target Matt Collins here on a nice in route. Now what we see Hollins has plenty of space against off coverage but Sudfeld the ball sells a little. It's a really bad drop by Hollins in all fairness but this this did raise some awareness to a trait that was very prevalent during his time at Indiana and that is that Sudfeld had a tendency to overwind and overexert. He would sort of dive into his throws and this would mean that the ball would often in this tilt motion end up sailing on him, be overthrown or underthrown. We can see a great example there from a game at Indiana against the Michigan State Spartans. Here's another one against Michigan and if you look at that front foot, it's pointing away from the target. He has to overextend. He struggles to get his body fully rotated through the throw. He's generating most of the momentum here with his upper body and overexerting because of it. Here's another look. He's on the run here, but look at that. The front foot facing a completely different direction to where the ball is going. Now, the first clip was from 2017. Obviously, all this is from college. We're going to see another example from that 2017 season, a game against the Dallas Cowboys in week 17, and then watch what happens the next year. So here's a better look at what I'm talking about. It's a little bit of pressure, rolls outside, the foot's facing one way, and look at how wide that arm angle is. He has to really drive through it. It's almost like a golf swing where he's had too much overswing over the top. But look at this. This was preseason against the Steelers. A home run hit to Shelton Gibson. And it was a thing of beauty. The deep ball was never a problem. But watch how straight Nate Sudfeld's back is. And all that tells me is that yes, he's having to angle the ball a bit higher. I get that. But the momentum he's generating, if you watch the leg stance and how much space he's keeping, it's a much shorter base. His feet aren't as wide, which means he can generate more power up through his hips and rotate his body through the throat. Throw. It's quarterback in mechanics. It's exactly like a golf swing. Here's another example of a quick release and the zip he gets on that ball now because he can follow through without having to overexert. It's magical. It, that is a stunning development and a real credit to the Eagles coaching staff, whether that's John DeFilippo, whether it's Peterson. And hey, let's not leave Press Taylor in the dark here either, who of course replaced DeFilippo when he left for Minnesota. But here's another example of Nate Sudfeld. That's a much better visual of what I'm talking about here, where his back is almost completely straight. What I'm going to do here is actually slow this play down one more time to take a look and then put that first clip over the top. So at this point, look at the difference in the back angle. That's at the point the ball is released. And there is no coincidence in the fact that Sudfeld came out slinging it and trying to hit all these deep throws in preseason because those mechanics have improved. It's so subtle and it's hard to look at a QB3 and say what's changed, what's developed. With Sudfeld it's easy. The base is much shorter. He's generating power. The throws are on the money. Accuracy was never Never really a problem. We'll get to decision making and some of the flaws that are still in his game as of right now. But that drop back reminds me so much of 2017 Carson Wentz. Again, a straight back. Look at the bent legs there. He's really been able to drive that power from the bottom of his body upwards, rotate the hips, get the ball out. It's a great throw. And the timing and the ability to float the ball over, it all comes from that stance. This is an easy touchdown to Shelton Gibson, but if we just roll this one back again, watch how he constantly moves his feet now to face his target. Even when moving to the left, knees, feet, 
head, shoulders, all perpendicular to where he wants the ball to go. That was not the case in 2017. It certainly was not the case all the time at Indiana. Again, touch on the deep ball. Look at that back. Completely straight. And the rest of it, Sudfeld is beginning to find a rhythm right now. And this shouldn't come as a surprise, as I said. This is something that's been in development. And if you wanted evidence that the Eagles quarterback development tree they have in place works, that when they bring in guys like the Filippo, like Press Taylor, this is what it's for. Someone that's going to stand in the pocket with his knees bent and make that kind of throw with a drive on the ball. And if you want to understand why the Eagles are so high on Nate Sudfeld, if you want to understand why they're so willing to let him stand in as a backup, this is it. But it doesn't mean he's perfect. He still has a tendency to see pressure that's not there, especially on cornerback blitzes. But here, for instance, he has Bryce Treggs wide open, gets the ball out way too quick. There was pressure nowhere near him. And there are these two really bizarre picks against the Steelers. That one looks like a miscommunication to me. I think he was expecting the receiver to go down the seam. And this was just another poorly advised throw. It's double coverage. I mean, Sudfeld's got to be better than that. I understand the timing. First quarter jitters maybe. It's his first time in a competitive game. Off topic a little bit, but this play right here is a Patriots play. It's a smash seam concept. You've got two curls, two seam routes, and a check down underneath in 12 personnel. I love the fact that after beating him in the Super Bowl, they still tried to use their own play against him in the preseason. The problem was though that Nate Sudfeld throws on the run, makes a bad decision. He gets out of danger here, but why he's launching the ball that early into that kind of coverage? Again, he's trying to take a shot late in the game, but it's just not the one, and that sort of thing when he's on the run and outside of the pocket it has been a hindrance a couple of examples here from his time at indiana when he does have to escape the mobility isn't there i mean this is an example from week 17 it's not exactly carson wentz it's not exactly russell wilson and it can be a bit sloppy his feet tend to get away from him and it's not the cleanest i mean this one i really just don't understand what's going on he's uh, that I, I'm, I've got nothing. I've truly got nothing on that one. But let's not let this take away from the fact that Nate Sudfeld has come on leaps and bounds. Because for every bizarre ditch pass, there's something like that. Off the back foot, moving away from the end zone, drops in a rainbow to the back corner. It is a dime of a throw. And this is the sort of thing we're used to seeing from Nate Sudfeld. Even he gets out of the pocket, that's new accuracy. That wasn't in his game before. The awareness to scramble, to take off, to see pressure, I think it can hurt him at times as a Said, it's almost like he sees ghosts, but the awareness is certainly there. Here's another example against the Steelers in what is my favourite Nate Sudfeld play yet. That was a stunning touchdown to Dallas Goddard. And let's just slow this down from a different angle and take a look. So Sudfeld's going to take the snap. He immediately feels the pressure here. And just watch this little juke. He's ready because he knows he's in that posture. Just jukes out the defender here. And at this point, pump fakes. That draws the safety in. Dallas Goddard slips to the left. And Nate Sudfeld across his body. It doesn't get much better than that. His ability to actually extend plays now is beginning to emerge as that confidence comes up. And there, the height, he's got the prototypical size for an NFL quarterback. And you partner that elven-like stature with a newfound comfort inside the pocket. Watch him climb the rungs here. Again, it all starts with a firm base, sneaks his way up, then sees the play break down. And just a subtle flick of the wrist. That is what Nate Sudfeld is bringing to the table now. He's calm, he's concise, he can scan through his reads. Even here, pressure's going to be in his face all day long. Scans through his reads, moves his hips in correlation to where his eyes are going. Now, where you evolve from here is going to be what Carson Wentz can do and more elite quarterbacks where you're holding safeties with your eyes. But for now, for a young guy to be able to completely correlate that movement to make sure his front feet, to make sure that his hips, his shoulders are all facing his target, it's such a big bonus and we're going to end this video with his first ever NFL touchdown. It's a nice little dump pass to Nelson Aguilar who takes it to the house and does the rest but this is such a big moment for Nate Sudfeld who stays with the Eagles behind Carson Wentz. Is he ready to come in and win a game in week 14 against the Rams? I don't honestly yet know but I'm a whole lot more comfortable with that idea than I was let's say six months ago by breaking down this tape going back to what we saw at Indiana in a phone room I did back in 2017. I completely understand why the Eagles are so high on Nate Sudfeld. I do think the possibility is there to bring in uh, another arm, someone like Easton Stick out of NDSU is obviously going to come to mind having previous experience with Carson Wentz in a similar system but at the end of the day, the need for a veteran, the need for a real uh, clipboard quarterback, I just don't think he's there anymore in this team. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Are you comfortable with Nate Sudfeld as your backup to Carson Wentz, especially given the nature of the 
the last two seasons. If you love this video, please leave a like, hit subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at LiamJenkins21. And from myself, Liam Jenkins, I will see you for another episode of Eagles Film Room very soon.